So, Dr. Per Tveit, welcome to the TV studio here at the University of Agda, Grimstad. Um, I would like to start asking you a question I'm, that I'm sure you can answer, and that is, uh, what is really a network arch bridge? Well, a network arch is an arch bridge with inclined hangers that cross each other more than once. And, uh, and um, why is this interesting? Because I understand you are interested in these bridges. <laughs> very, very much so. Well, uh, you save a lot of steel thereby. And uh, if you have a concrete tie at the bottom of the bridge, then you can s normally save half the steel. But uh, if you have a steel tie in the bridge, it is more likely to be 20% uh, of the steel that you save. So your, your main point here is uh, simply that uh, this bridge is uh, cheaper to build because of uh, less steel. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that is a very important point. Then it is a very elegant structure because the arches are so slim when it's done in the right way. So this means that you get the more elegant bridge at the same time? Yes, yes, I would, I would claim that. Yes, yes. Um, uh, so just to sum up, uh, the two benefits are that uh, the, um, you save on the steel part and, yeah. and it looks great. And uh, on some sides, it's easy to erect. Oh, that is an addition. So there are several things. And, and this is compared to all similar bridge constructions? Or yes, yes. More or less so, yes. So would you say that this is the optimum bridge in this con concept? Of, of this, in this concept, yeah. indeed. But, uh, yeah. well, uh, and uh, steel, you, when it comes to the use of steel, I haven't said any, seen anything that comes near to it. Right. So, so, um, so you would say say that this is uh, an in, in, innovation that is important. Yes. Well, uh, that could I suppose could be said. It uh, has been accepted uh, in twenty two countries and uh, more than a hundred bridges, hundred bridges of this type has been built. And who um, came up with the idea? What's the history behind it? What, how did this start? Well, I was working on a type of bridge that is very popular in Sweden, uh, the uh, Nielsen bridges. And then I thought I could do it better. That was when I was uh, doing my master thesis. and. Then I came up with the network arch, and uh, that's been my main field of research ever since. I've gone around the globe four times and lectures in 50 countries uh, about it. Of course, they didn't accept it everywhere, but uh, they have accepted it to some extent. But So you're actually claiming that this is your invention? That's what you're claiming here? Yeah, or shall we say I... I thought of it. But in, in Germany, they say, I'm the inventor of the network arch. Yes. So, so there was no previous history. This was something you, you sort of uh, took uh, out of uh, your own work, sort of, uh, without having any pre-experience. Uh, yes. Well, you see, the forerunner the, of the network arch, the Nielsen Bridges, were built in Sweden between the two wars. But then the uh, amount of uh, the loads on the bridges became much bigger and the materials became much stronger. And then it was made good sense to let the hangers cross each other hmm. many times. Um. Then 
I understand that uh, you you started uh, your interest in this uh, when you actually was a student. That's that's correct. That's correct. Lack of uh, imagination. I have stuck to it ever since. And uh, and uh, and. Uh, you you were studying in Trondheim, right? Yes. And and uh, what did your professor tell you when when you sort of invented something new? I I, I don't think he expected this. Well, he said uh, I've got this uh, his critics of my uh, master thesis that uh, I spent too much time on my my patent bridge. So so. Uh, he didn't uh, see this as uh, only positive, sort of, that you were using so much no, time. No, well... So actually, you had another task. Uh, I, I, the, I had neg neglected to some extent the task that he had given me. Uh, right, and I can <laughs> understand as a professor that uh, he's not entirely happy with you. <laughs> well, but uh, he understood yes. the advantages of it. So when I had finished, then I didn't very much liked the idea of starting to work, mm. so I got a miserable scholarship for studying a year in Germany. Right. And there, uh, some professors said it was a good idea, and some professors said, no, they said it was probably no, no good, but uh, then uh, one of them was very kind to me and said, let's build a model. Yes, right. And after I built the model, then uh, it seemed a good idea. So, so they didn't believe you. I mean, we have to recognize at this time that uh, the German professors on civil engineering and all construction and things were top of the world, perhaps. Definitely. And and uh, still, they didn't believe in you. No, no. So uh, this was this beginner's luck. Well, I I thought I was going out of my mind and had to be <laughs> blocked, uh, be put in a in a, a sort of detention if things went on because only me could see that this was a good idea. So it was that bad that all these experts uh, were shaking their heads and... and uh... There was one professor said, let's build a model. Yes. And he, I met him in the corridor sometimes before I, while I was building and he said that the ideas that when we do build models that prove that the ideas we have are not correct, that is all you are valuable uh, thing to find out. So he wanted to build uh, build this model in order to prove you wrong and and to to quiet you down, perhaps. Well, maybe he thought that it was good for me to prove to myself that it was a bad idea. <laughs> right, right. But he did r write a recommend letter recommendation after that year, and, and I could go up to Trondheim. And there I wanted to study these network arches. But uh, no, no, no money for that. But they would like me to do my licentiate on network arches because that was sort of what later became gave me a doctor yes. title. That, that, that's what in, in early days uh, evolved into a PhD, uh, yes, yes. really. So, so, so this was an early PhD sort yes. of thing. And there were not many people uh, wanting to have these scholarships for the PhD. So they were very happy to let me have a scholarship. Why, why didn't they want to have uh, scholarships? What was the wrong, what was wrong with it? It was such a miserable sum of oh, money. Oh, so, so it was <laughs> lack of money. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you were so interested that you took this. Oh, I took this. And first I came to Professor Selberg and said, I would like to do this licentiate on the network arch. Yes. But he said that's not what we usually do. I don't think it's suitable. Yes. So I wrote 10 pages about the idea and showed it to him. And then he said, oh, yes, let's let's go ahead. Right, right. So th that's what started it really uh, yeah. in that time. And, that, and then you actually evolved this into more than an idea, that uh, a concept sort of. Well, uh, it was a hopeless idea, really, because at the time we didn't have any computers 
Right. So we had to do build models for every bridge. What and year was this? When did you start this uh, licentiate? I start my licentiate in uh, 1956. Yes, not many computers at that time. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and I got a chance to have it the network arts computed when Saab, the Swedish company, wanted to sell their computer to. Was this the aircraft or fighter aircraft? Yeah, company? the fighter aircraft came came because did they, they, had did a they actually come with a computer to the, to Trondheim or no? Well, they wanted to sell the computer to Trondheim. Yes, but I, uh, but uh, and therefore, you know, for show, they said, "Oh yes, we can calculate this, all right." Okay, so so you gave them the problems and they calculated it in in uh, Sweden then. Yes, yes. Right, right. <laughs> and there was just one go but it it was fairly right what they arrived at and the bridge was built at Steinchair. Yes, how what was this really the step from having this concept and this calculation in until building a brick a bridge how how um, did you convince people that uh, this bridge actually should be built which was of course a new concept and unproven indeed. Well uh, in Steinche there was a, a town engineer who thought good ideas should be tried. Mm. And he knew of me from his uh, assistant and one of his young engineers who had been in my class. And he also know that, knew that I was sitting in the forum of Professor Selberg. Yes. So he thought that that bound to be right. So the connection with Professor Selberg at that time was important. Very important indeed. He was my teacher. Yes, and he, he was uh, very well known in Norway, would you say? Yeah, he was the one of four brothers who became professors. Mm. And he was the number one bridge builder in Norway. I'm sure that would help a bit. Yes, <laughs> it, it did. So then I... and, and actually, there are more things about this. Yes. You see, he, his father was from the same fjord that as my father... What kind of fjord was that? Oh, well, it was a Ferde fjord in... Uh, yes. Yeah, you know, yeah, up in Sundfjord. Okay. And then my mother became very much... became a friend of Professor Selberg's mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, the... But still, the, the uh, bridge office didn't think it was such a good idea. But then my mother went to Oslo to talk to her brother, and he was permanent secretary to the Minister of Transport. And all of a sudden, I was allowed to come build a, to suggest a bridge, which uh, could be built in uh, the way into Exingedalen. But if my bridge won the competition then i was paid if i wasn't didn't win the competition i didn't wasn't paid anything right uh obviously you you did win that but but um, are you saying that you you actually needed uh, uh political pressure in order to build a <laughs> bridge well i it uh, i didn't know about when i was a young student how important it was to have, be connected but I was connected. Through your family, you mean? Yes. <laughs> it always helps to have family connections, of course. <laughs> well, I found that out later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> OK. Um, tell me about this first bridge. Well, it is... I've got some pictures of it. Here is one picture of the bridge at Steinkjær. It is triangular arches and, uh, well, has some... Uh, features that would or would not the bridge office wouldn't do yes for instance the 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 uh, here you have uh well in the wind bracing yes. you have some steel rods right but then the boss of the uh, bridge uh, scottish bridge office came and he said oh we would do that so uh, well and it, I did it, and then there is a, a little thing here to show 
that you shouldn't go onto the bridge. Climbing in the arch is forbidden. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You mean the sign here? Yeah, the sign, yes. That's yes, right. But uh, and I thought, well, people don't mind about that sign, but uh, if they can pass the sign, they'd probably be all right anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so that was right. So, so, so this was your first bridge. And, yes. And and uh, where in Norway? Th- this was north of uh, Trondheim, was it? North of Trondheim, 120 mm. kilometers north of Trondheim. And and uh, everything went fine. It's still there. It didn't fall down. Yes, yes, it's still there, and it's good shape. Yes. And this is interesting because. Yes. It. Uh, it's the. First. Layer of. Paint is on it. Is the. Red. Yes. Paint. So- so this and is the great. architect said, we must keep this. Mm-hmm. But it, the courage failed me and I, uh, it became grey in the end. But I've been seeing in China, they have very often have their eyes arch bridges pointed red. They're painted red and that's right. a good idea. Well, especially for you, because then you can see the beauty of your work, sort of. <laughs> Well, I was very con- very happy about that. Okay, so now we have um, uh, now we have uh, discussed your first bridge that you actually got up. So just to uh, sort of sum up, you you were just a student and you got an idea that nobody believed in, and here suddenly there was a bridge, and with the benefits you are talking about here for everybody to see that you were uh, could uh, make bridges that were. Elegant. Obviously, you could see uh, that they were they looked quite okay, and uh, that you could save so much uh, steel. Then, obviously, then this was a breakthrough. Everybody wanted to build such bridges. No, it wasn't as simple as that. <laughs> but uh, I was because of my mother's uh, talking to her brother. This bridge was built. Uh, when, when, when was this? Bit? That was uh, it was finished on the same year as the Stanja. So bridge. actually, two bridges were built more or less yes. on the same time. Yes. And, and they were finished about uh, what year? Well, in 1963. In 1963, there about there were two two Pertveit bridges in Norway. Yes, yes. There or were. in the world, I should say, <laughs> perhaps. Well, <laughs> more or less so, but. Uh, but this bridge, this other bridge here, uh, where is this uh, situated? It it is near Bergen. It's on the way into Exingedalen, mm-hmm. and um, it looks very slim, really. Yes, it was the world's slimmest art bridge for oh, it must have been something forty years or something like yes, that. Yes. But uh, well, so 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 this is basically recognized that these two two bridges that were built at this time. Uh, at this period, there was nothing else like this in the world at that time. No, actually, the ideas that I had presented to my professor in in Germany was uh, taken up yes. by a German firm, and they built. Um, let me see if it is here. That is yes. And I built this bridge between Germany uh, on, in northern Germany on the way to Denmark. It, it looks kind of similar to, to your bridge, actually. Yes, it is, it is. So and this is a Pertweit b- bridge. Uh, yeah, that was the idea that was accepted by my professor after my model test down there. And he spoke to, because he was from the firm that built this bridge right right. and he has told me that there is a connection between him and the building of this bridge i see but the fellow who was in charge of this bridge he died of um, died fairly young after he had become a professor by by, uh, tuberculosis because he had been a prisoner in russia during the uh, second world war right Right, right. But this bridge here, where was that? This was in Denmark, was it? Or? Well, in northern Germany. In northern Germany, yes. Yes, um, le- leading up to the ferry 
that goes over to... I see. So this was uh, on the road to, to, to Denmark, sort of. Yes, yes. Right, right. Well, it was also looks quite okay, this bridge. Yeah, but it is uh, very stocky. Okay, you are not happy with it. You would have done it differently, is that <laughs> well, what you're saying? Well, if you compare to this, you can see that my bridge is much slimmer. Uh, yeah, but uh, I mean, uh, th this probably is... Uh, um, it's a bigger it, it, bridge. It's a bigger bridge for more weight. Yes, yes. You and have then to it's... give some credit to the Germans, perhaps. Oh, well, I, I will... <laughs> I, I, I'm not worried about that. I can no. give a lot of credit to them. And, so, so and that, that was a bridge that I built there. Yes. was a bridge I couldn't have built as a young engineer. Yeah, exactly. But this uh, means that... Uh, and, and this bin, uh, German bridge was actually built at the same time period. Yes. Uh, uh, around 63, 64, 65, yeah, something. 63. 63. 63. Yes. Oh, so three bridges... That surely must have been a breakthrough, and then, uh, uh, <laughs> well, then well. you must have been generally accepted after that. No, no, I wanted to start, uh, I wanted to work in the bridge office, but they didn't want me. You mean in Norway? Yeah, but they didn't want me. Did they know about these bridges? Oh, they did indeed, because they had been controlling this. So, so they didn't like uh, the, this kind of construction then? No, and uh, maybe they didn't like me. Well, I had also ideas on my own. And <laughs> <Yeah>. Not everybody. <laughs> you, you, you couldn't be controlled as they wanted <laughs> yeah. an engineer, to, young engineer, to be <laughs> they controlled. Weren't. Maybe they weren't convinced they could be controlled. So they actually, even though they had a vacancy, they didn't give it to you. No, 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 no way. So um, they so were dragging their feet. They were dra well, sort of signaling that they really didn't want you then, or yes, yes, I, I stood it, understood it that way. Right, right. And the head of the bridge office wrote a little booklet about Norwegian bridge building before between 1950 and 19, 1930 and 1960. Mm -hmm. And he didn't mention at the all. network arch at all. Even though there were two, two bridges of one specific type in Norway already. Yes, yes, but uh, he didn't consider it worth mentioning. S Professor Selberg said I should ask him right. why yes. uh, it, my network arts had not been mentioned, but I was too proud to do so. I, I didn't ask him. Well, uh, I'm not sure you could uh, get an on honest answer <laughs> anyway. So, <laughs> so, but this was the start. Um, that, that was and what happened after that? Well, I... Uh, went abroad yes. uh, to Sweden, which now to Denmark, which was abroad, really, in those days. Right. Oh, yes, and I had designed a bridge in Sweden that didn't win anything in the competition. Right. And I went to Denmark, and I was working three years on the network arch, on the uh, tunnel under the Limfjord. Right. It was right. a very interesting job. Mm. And, uh, so, so actually, you didn't see any future in Norway. Had to go abroad, really. Yes, I, I, I thought that was best. Mm. So, uh, so even with the success, you had a bad reputation, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you couldn't control, really. <laughs> so, no. Yes. But but uh, but uh, did you continue working on these bridges when you oh, went yes. to Denmark? Oh yes, I was in Denmark for a competition in Denmark. I I handed in a suggestion, but it didn't win anything. Right. And uh, yes, let's say it that way. But um, but um, these three bridges that were. Uh, erected in the early parts of the 1960s. Yes. Um, I'm sure you know the history of this bridge type. Uh, when did the next, the fourth bridge come? Well, the fourth bridge came much, much later. So there was a full stop here, basically? Yes, basically. But um, then it was so that I... Uh, came to Norway eventually and started working at this institution where we're sitting now. Yeah, but that was much later, of course. Yes, but then I was allowed to 
go around Europe, tell about the network arch. Mm -hmm. And when I passed Dresden, I right. was there for three hours. Right. And the professor there decided to send some students to me right. to do their master thesis on this bridge. Mm -hmm. When was this? Uh, that was in um, 85. And, and uh, no more bridges had been built uh, with your uh, construction? No, actually it wasn't like that. Because you see, this uh, bridge here was... The German ones. The German one, yes. That was, the test for that was seen by a Japanese. Right. And he thought it was a good idea. So they built a lot of such bridges in Japan. Without asking you? Yeah, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, So in the world as a whole, it was not a full stop really. They, they no. actually picked up, the Japanese actually picked up these ideas and started to build bridges. Yes, yes, yes. But I did it, of course, in a different way from I did. Yes, but, but the, the, you knew about this, did you? Yes, yes, mm. I knew about this. And I uh, changed, sent letters to and fro with a man who was the number one man for network arches in Japan. Right. And I was teaching for a year then in, uh, in Texas, uh, Houston. Yes, Texas. but uh, but uh, but when you were teaching in in Houston in Texas, uh, was this after you had come back to Norway, or was this before? No, it was. Uh, I had also a stint work in um, in Aalborg University. Yes, and there I was exchanged with a professor from Denmark. Uh, from uh, right, right. How Texas. many years were you in uh, in Aalborg then? Well, I was. Or something like ten years or something right, like uh, that. Right, and and and, uh, uh, and and you were teaching uh, construction then. Yes, or? yes. Right, right. Civil, civil engineering. Civil engineering, yes. Generally. Right, right. Yes. Right. So as you were uh, teaching uh, civil engineering, you were still uh, fiddling with your bridge solo. Yes, yes. So some of my students got the task to do. Examine this and examine that. So, so you 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 really have had this bridge on your in your brain for all these years. Uh, oh yes, hmm. oh yes, because I had no better idea. <laughs> <laughs> to to my mind, that yes, is yes, <laughs> and, and this also uh, indicates that uh, that uh, this technology, this new technology, was in need of a lot of uh, development and and. Uh, well, uh, it was really important that these. Uh, students from Germany, they wrote their master thesis, sort of 300 pages with right, right. with uh, lots of calculations, and it became more believable. Oh yes, what I suggested. So that was uh, one of the one of the important factors that uh, uh, convinced people afterwards that uh, maybe there was something more into this. Than yes, yes, and um, I also got in contact with a fellow called Arhild Hanekamhaug. He was in the bridge office of Western Norway and had built some bridges out at the summer islands, between summer islands, and he showed me the site of this bridge and said, could I do something of this kind? When was this? That must have been sort of... Uh, 2006-7. So not so many bridges in, in Europe, uh, at least, were, no. were built, uh, <laughs> no. to say the very <laughs> least. I mean, there were three bridges, and, and this is the fourth bridge in Europe, is it? Yeah. Uh, well, I cannot tell that for certain, because the, the Spaniards took up the idea, uh -huh, yes. and I, I do not know exactly... But, I could find out. But. but if you look at this picture of this bridge, uh, uh, without really realizing uh, uh, all the technical details behind it, and I'm sure the camera can't uh, do full uh, uh, details uh, really, but it certainly looks like a very elegant br bridge and, and al almost dangerously uh, under uh, uh, calculated in a sense. You know, if you are used yes. to to more. 
So, so did you have uh, questions from people who say that could this really yes, stand? Yes, of course. But then uh, there were uh, several engineers looking through it and didn't find anything. They didn't find the floor they were looking for. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And uh, and uh, so, and I showed it to my old professor in Dresden. Yes. And he said it looks criminally slender. Yeah, yeah, that's my thought also. <laughs> it, it, it looks uh, as if uh, somebody did a mistake here, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, then... Uh, but nobody has fallen down on these bridges, so no, you, no. You, you, apparently you, you, you have got it right. I think I got it right. right. The final calculation for this bridge was done by Ors Jacobsen, mm. and I sent this picture to... Uh, um, Chinese that I knew, yes. and he asked, is it a pedestrian bridge? <laughs> yes. I said, no, no, it's a road bridge. Yes. And then he asked me to come down, to come to China and give a lecture right. in his firm. Yes, I see. Which was designing bridges. Hmm. And the, the staff of this firm is 500 engineers. Well, everything is big in China, of course. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, and in America. <laughs> yes, right, right, right. <laughs> because uh, um, in July, I'm going to China to tell yes. about this. Um, we all have seen the old pictures of this uh, bridge uh, in North America that was uh, oh, the oscillating, the Tacoma <laughs> Bridge. <laughs> yes, and, yes. And, and of course, you have had a lot of questions about how about uh, self-oscillations and things yeah, with these yeah. bridges. What yes. would you answer to that? Actually... In this bridge, the Ors Jakobsen found it was it was a good idea to have a connection, a continuous connection between the bridge and the side span. Right. But then there was a professor van Bokart in Belgium. He said he would like to calculate this right. bridge because he had. Uh, be cal do a calculation for some bridges that weren't as slim as this one. Okay. And he came back and said, oh yes, it's all right, you don't need this connecting it to the side spans. And uh, he did it for wind vibrations and so on. Yeah, and a dynamic simulation. A dynamic simulation. Right. And, and uh, he said, it was perfectly all right, nothing, nothing to trouble with this. And I was very glad about that. Well, obviously, the, the, since the, the, it's so slim, the, 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 the wind can't catch uh, <laughs> the bridge as, as in the... Maybe so, maybe I don't know. so. <laughs> but also, um, uh, it, yes, it uh, is also very good for earthquakes. Oh, yes. Because the load it can carry is big compared to the weight of the bridge. Yes, yeah, so it doesn't uh, have a lot of weight itself to No, no. So when with. it is shaken, yes. then it... it there it's is not no. as dangerously shaking as no, a, no. a more heavy bridge. <laughs> no, a more heavy bridge would be more likely to fall down. Actually. So there was a professor in uh, Istanbul who was written to me about that. Yes, yes, yes. That was very nice of him. So... Um, could you tell me a bit more about uh, about um, um, where are these uh, bridges today? I mean, uh, obviously there are more bridges in the world oh, today. Oh yes, there are more bridges in the world. There are uh, bridges in more than 20 countries. More than 100 bridges are built. Mm. That the last one... <laughs> That was built in the Solomon Islands. Oh, yes, it is. Solomon Island in the Pacific. And it's a very slender bridge, as you can see. Um, I'm very happy about that. Yes, yes. Um, so that means that now it had have sort of caught on. That yeah, the, now it's caught on. So... Yes. so, so uh, you had to be old before you got recognized, sort of. <laughs> well, yes, I am 81 years old, and I'm about to 
travel a little bit more and yes. not study so much on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, uh, you mentioned traveling. Could you could you tell me a bit about all your travels? Uh, obviously, you have in many years now been promoting your bridge uh, by yes. traveling all around the world. Yes, yes. Oh well, I've I have lectured about uh, my bridge in more than fifty countries, mm. and I have traveled around the globe four times. Right, right. On my way to tell about this, and uh, I. I told a lot about this in in uh, India. Right, right. But in India, they have so respect for the the uh, boss that it will all be as the boss has likes it to be, and the boss doesn't want to be responsible for a bridge type that he doesn't know. Yeah, the, 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 he wants proven technology, sort of. Yes, yes. Ah. yes that, that's always the safe <laughs> way to go. Yes, yes. But uh, in America, they have uh, very much more uh, been willing to accept the idea. Mm. And uh, it's there about six types, six of these bridges have been built. Right, right. Uh, w when you have uh, traveled so extensively, and I mean, not just like a tourist, but you have actually been... Uh, uh, lecturing on lecturing tours yes. all around the world. I'm sure you have some interesting uh, stories to tell about uh, something. Uh, some of your uh... yes, yes. Well, there was something that impressed me very much and favorably. A year after I had been in um, in New Zealand, I got this picture right sent to me, and the two tallest bridge arches. The bridges are carrying half of the, uh, an arch each, and the yellow bridge that is uh, here, that is where the, there were the people were sitting that were joining the two t halves of the arch together. Okay, so this was uh, built in two halves and joined together yes. in the middle, sort of? Yes, yes. Right. And uh, it was also for a very sh for a year or two the sh lo uh, the most slender arch bridge in the world. Right, right, right. But now, uh, so obviously a lot of people uh, start to believe you now. Oh yes, yes. But then you see there is a problem because it is not so simple this type of bridge. No. And those who are likely to be trusted with build in such a bridge, they have a lot of interesting things to study. Mm. So uh, that speaks against the bridge, but uh, some. But uh, but obviously this is a bridge that uh, has to be accounted now in, in the world literature in the sense that uh, so many has been built. I mean, they can't make a, a list of bridge uh, types and bridge building without uh, mentioning this anymore. No, no, it seems uh, strange if they did, didn't mention this bridge. Mm. And, and I'm very happy about this. Yes, yes. And um, and you mentioned that you had uh, a lot of uh, students from after you were in Dresden yes. uh, to help you. Yes. And, and, and I understand you still have students. Yes, yes. Now I have got some students from Hanover. So, so you are basically, even though, of course, you have retired officially a long time ago, you are actually still developing this bridge. And, uh, yes. Are, and, and I understand you are... Uh, have full working days uh, still. Yes, yes, but I don't work so much on Saturdays and Sundays now. No, but uh, <laughs> but uh, still you are at it, sort of. And oh yes, I'm at it, and and, uh, and, and, uh, that, and that I I, I enjoy it. I mm. must really say. So so th these uh, students that has come in the recent years to to work with you have they come from Germany, all of them? Yes from different places in Germany then? Or? Well, they, before they came from Dresden, mm -hmm. but then the, my professor there, he is retired. Right. So now I, um, there's this professor in an offer sending me students, mm. and he's got a very famous name. Oh, yes. He's called Marx. 
Marx. Uh, but we it's have heard Stephen. that before. <laughs> is it, it from is the Stephen same Marx? <laughs> but it is from the same family, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, you haven't uh, asked him about this. No, I, he has uh, sort of not stressed any connection to Karl Marx. Right, right, right. Um, so, um, uh, just to sum up this, uh, this uh, you you feel that uh, that. Uh, uh, this bridge type now is so uh, well known that uh, that uh, it's expected that people in the future will build these bridges without you having to uh, travel around the world to yeah yeah i think it has got started now and uh, mm. and uh, it's uh, yeah. so a, a final breakthrough solo yes i think it is all right for me to travel a little bit more not lecturing about bridges. Right, right. So enjoy your life a bit. Yeah, well, I've enjoyed it very much. <laughs> yes. uh, um, where were you born? And and uh, I was born in Evia, no, in no Hornes, because my father was a teacher at the gymnasium there. Yes. Uh, where is that in Norway? That is. Uh, 60 kilometers from Kristiansand, the southernmost town in Norway. Right, so you actually are born in this region. Yes, yes. Um, so, what kind of family did, were you grown up in when you were growing up? Well, my father, he came from Sundfjord, the north of the Sognefjord. Hmm. And uh, he wa when he uh, went to gymnasium and did his student's exam, there were 30 years since anybody from his region, his county, his region had gone to the to the gymnasium right. from his commune. So this is the high school, as we would say today, perhaps. Yeah, maybe, but it's a little bit more than high school. Well, a sort of high school. From, I mean, there isn't any other parallel, I guess. No, no, there's no. This parallel. is this is the education you take to, to um, get you into university, basically. That's right. So you that's qualify right. through yeah, this to go right. to the university. That's right. And he was number two in the country when he got that exam. So, so you come from a clever family, is that what you're saying? Well, my father was very clever, yeah. <laughs> though uh, he wasn't very clever with people. But no. uh, What kind of uh, subjects uh, was he mastering? What, what oh, well, he, what it did? was... Old English was his uh, his his uh, main subject. So he was a langu language guy. Yeah, yeah, and Norwegian and and German. Yes, right. Um. And there are little money in Sunfjord. Right. So I am very concerned about that the bridges shouldn't cost more than they have to. So, so you're saying that uh, your upbringing has something to do with your yes, thinking? Yes, 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 indeed, indeed. Um, it's different in China because they have been more willing to spend on things that were extreme and not necessarily so uh, economic. Yes, um, um, so, so one of the reasons why you why you sort of got the idea of this bridge uh, might have something to do with your upbringing in Norway, would you say? Yes, or shall we say, to me it was very important that the bridge was economical. Yes, yes, and yes. That and this was, was after the war, of course. Yes, yes. When, when uh, Europe was uh, struggling to yes. get on its feet again. Yes, yes. And, and needed a lot of bridges, actually. Yes, but uh, when I was in Germany, I thought of, you know, when after I'd done my master thesis to go to Germany, I wanted to study uh, pre-stressed concrete. Right. But all the books on pre-stressed concrete in uh, in the university library were lent out, so I couldn't get any. And, and you couldn't order them back, sort of, or anything. Pardon that you couldn't order the books back. I mean, no, you, you no, no, it was impossible. So, uh, so, so. Uh, just the answer was very clear. We've got, we've lent all, out all our books. We so then, then you. instead, you focused on your bridge, perhaps. Yes, yes, uh, that was part of the reason why I focused <laughs> on the bridge. Yes, yes. Um, 
Perhaps you can tell me a bit about, uh, obviously you have presently also a family, and now you have children and uh, a wife and things. Perhaps you can tell me just a bit about oh, your Oh, well, uh, I've got three children and uh, eight grandchildren, and right, uh, right. from which I can conclude they like making children. Is that in the genes? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. But in any case, uh, my eldest daughter, she's a teacher of, of religion and chemistry, right. which is an odd combination. And then my uh, uh, son, eldest son, is a headhunter. Right. And my youngest son, he is in uh, in. Uh, Technological Institute of Denmark. Uh, right. he, he, he is a teacher or professor or something? Well, he's a director, uh, not on the top level, but one level below. There is uh, about right. 120 persons working on his, in his part of the, of the uh, institute. So you have a great family today so you can be proud of. I am very pleased that they mm. are all doing well. But I, surely you are not just working. What do you do when you relax? Do you have any hobbies, or what? What really do you do when you, when you don't think about bridges, or is that possible well, not to think I, about the bridges? I think a lot about bridges, but I very much appreciate this, this periodical Economist, yes. because economy has has been very interesting to me. Okay, you are you, are, as a sort of hobby, you are interested in in economics. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. Well, that's uh, an interesting, it's also a field and an, an interest to many people. Oh. At least everybody is suffering more or less about the economy. <laughs> um, another another question. Uh, um, when you, I mean, obviously it is some years since you, since you went to school and uh, to university, but what do you think about the quality of your your uh, your education here in Norway at that time. This was basically well, after, before and after the war, I guess. Yeah, well, it was very hard to get into the technical university when... Uh, yeah, we are not talking about the university in Trondheim, of course. Yeah, Trondheim, and that was... I got in in 1951. Mm. And uh, those uh, who got in then made quite good engineers. But... Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, well, the best are as good as they ever were, but there are no, some engineers that uh, are not so clever. Uh, uh, what I meant was, what do you think about generally the education that uh, was the educational system that you went through at that time? Uh, was this... Uh, especially since you have been abroad and things, do you think that it was up to standard, sort of, international standard? Yes, I think it was a fairly, yes, I think it was good. And, uh, but of course, before we had the computers, yes. it had to be <laughs> very different. Yes, yes, of course. Slide rulers and things. Yeah, slide ruler and <laughs> things <laughs> like that. And uh, there are some things we couldn't solve, which yes, is yes. done by a computer, mm. you press a few buttons yes, and then course. you got a result. But how, how was it to be a university student at that time? I mean, uh, in Trondheim, um, I'm sure you, your parents were very proud of you, for example. And, and uh, Yes, my father was very pleased. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, because this was uh, a high status thing to do at that yes, time. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. And... Uh, there was a saying in Trondheim in those days that uh, a major um, export article of Trondheim was engineers' uh, wives. So, so uh, the local girls were interested in you. Oh yes, yes, they were, and and vice versa. <laughs> So, so um, uh, what you're saying is, of course, that then that, uh, that there were uh, so, a lot of social gatherings uh, outside of the study hours. Well, uh, there was a student society where I was very often going on the Saturday, and and uh, well, we brought a girl along also. Hmm. So, so you had a nice time, basically. Oh, I enjoyed my studies. Yes, it yeah. was really. 
a happy it, time? It was a happy time oh. uh, for me. Yes, right. Um, and then eventually you came to, to work here in Grimstad. When was that really? That was in 85. In 1985 you came. And then you came from, from Denmark? From Denmark, from the what's now Aalborg University. Yes. Um, and, and why did you... Why did why did you want to come here? Well, uh, back to Norway. I mean, you 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 did actually you did uh, tell me just now that uh, your reception in Norway hadn't been too good, sort of. Why did well, you? Well, I came back because uh, they told me in Denmark. There were some people in Denmark who told me how I should dis uh, calculate my bridges, and I didn't like that. And also, there was personal reasons. And I looked at the technical yearbook of Norway and found that the climate in Grimstad is about the best climate they have in, in Norway. I think that's uh, a fact that we living here agree with. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that everybody else agrees with it, but uh, at least the climate here is quite nice. So it, it, yes. definitely this is uh, um, one of the reasons why we want to live here, of course. Yes, that certainly applies to me. And uh, and um, uh, how would you describe your working period here in Grimstad? Well, I became head of the computer science department. Immediately in 85? Yes, fairly immediately, because mm. uh, the other person who could do it, he he wanted to do his research, right. so he pushed the admiration administration on to me. Right, and as uh, a freshman, sort of. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I had some. We had some good ideas. Sort of, we said that everybody wants to who wants to do his doctor degree will have uh, half, uh, half as half as much lecturing as the others will right. have. Yeah, so, so you mean that the, your workload was reduced in order to do other things? Yeah, 50. The uh, workload reduced by 50% if they want to do their doctor degrees. Right. And two of them did. Right. So we thought that maybe we could get up to the level where we had one doctorate per, uh, per teacher. Right. Because one of the teachers had uh, two doctorates. Oh, really? <laughs> um, um, so that was your earlier years, but what happened after that? After? Well, uh, it was a combination of computer science and civil engineering. Right. That, but when the, uh, when the, uh, as the time went on, the interest came more onto the civil, the onto the computer science. Yes. So I stepped down. So this was a sort of a combination originally between uh, applied civil engineering and computing, sort of. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, the, the, this was the idea originally. Yeah. yeah. And then it evolved into more computing more, and less uh, yeah. less bridges, sort of. <laughs> yes, yes. And then I wasn't. Uh, uh, then you were more then alienated I from this. I wasn't uh, head of the department anymore. Right, right, right. But uh, but you re when did you retire? I retired when I was sixty-seven. Yes. At what uh, what year was that? That was <coughs> when I was actually some years ago now. Yes, yes. Uh, Thirty after I've been. Yeah, sixty. So this was in the nineteen nineties that you were retired. Yeah, nineteen sixty. Not Seven. Nineteen ninety-seven. Nineteen ninety-seven. Yes. That, that, yes. Yes. That's right. Yes. So you have actually been working as a retired person for all these years afterwards. Yes. Yes. And, and I, that's uh, quite a, quite a long time now. Yeah. And is, and, and uh, focusing I, mostly on the bridges for definitely. All this. Yes. So you have had a lot of time now and and no bosses to 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 tell me to, what to tell me what to do. <laughs> so so which must have been quite efficient in a sense. Well. Uh, was uh, yeah, it was very much to my liking. Yes, um, there are some people actually to believe that uh, as you get older, you get wiser. Do you think that's true? Well, 
not in the general rule, but it's I suppose it happens. <laughs> So, so the, 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 it's not generally so. No, it's not generally but, so. But, but, do you think you has become wiser over the years? Well, uh, more patient. No, more impatient actually. More impatient. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, I, I, uh, and and now I'm notice that I do not uh, do not think so quickly and so sharply. Right, as right. I did before. But obviously, uh, you are in your 80s now, so you couldn't yes. expect that. <laughs> oh, well, that's to be expected indeed. Yes. Um, another question, uh, since you are old, not necessarily wiser, but at least older, um, if you had some political power looking at the Norwegian society, is there anything you would really change if you could? Well, uh I am very much believer in that I stress, give my point of view every fourth year, and after that leave it to the politicians. Right. And so uh, you are a bit relaxed in that sense. Yes, yes. Th there, there are no, I, there are no issues really that you. Uh, well, uh, uh, I, I think there are some things that they should be. But then again. It must be left to those who are yes Com others. competent. Uh, you, you mean the politicians are competent? Not necessarily, but they are elected to do these decisions. Yes. So so anyway, yes. Some um, I, I don't. But but uh, at least uh, um, since you as a hobby, you you were saying that you as a hobby had uh, were had some interest in in economics. Yes. Uh, of course, you have followed the financial crisis and all of these things. Oh then. yes, I do. I so, do. so do you have any comments to that and and uh, any possible solutions or anything? Well, do do? I do not think that the present government is so stupid as many would have it out to be. You mean here in Norway? No. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I'm also thinking about Europe and how how can oh. Europe get out of this? <laughs> do you think there are some stupid governments out in Europe? Well. When they have an election in France now, yes. they do not mention the difficult situation of French economy. Mm, yeah, okay. They don't, because, uh, well, the the voters don't like to hear it. But uh, but uh, surely people are, f are focusing on on the bad ec economic situation in Europe now. I mean, you have it on on TV every day, uh, problems in in Greece and in Spain, etc., etc. Yeah, yeah. And we have a high unemployment and things like this. Well, I mean, in Greece, they, I mean, what they're do, doing to themselves, they, they suffer from for their stupidity. Okay, uh, Per Tveit, that has to be the the final word. <laughs> word then, so thank you very much. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you very much. Can I drink? Yeah, that can I do. Skal vi se om det er liv her inne i kontrollrommet fremdeles? Våpenbevis. Ja, det var det. En time.